Our next speaker is going to help us understand the global goals for sustainable development. Um, he is a United Nations resident coordinator and a resident representative of the United Nations Development Program in the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ula Almgren. Thank you and, and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. That's better. Thank you, uh, Maria Ressa and the whole of the Rappler team for making this uh, happen. Thank you so much. And thank you to my colleagues in the United Nations Development Program and the whole of the United Nations system present here in the Philippines for your contributions to today's um, event. And really, thank you to all of you for taking time to be with us here today. Uh, just a quick bracket here, Maria, when you were showing the, 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 the tweets here, I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed to see that my total of 28 followers didn't show up, but I'm hoping that perhaps that can change by the end of, of today. Go look for me. Anyway, I'm, I'm very pleased to join you in what is a key moment in the uh, Philippine media history that of acknowledging and celebrating the disruptive power of technology and innovation, in particular social media to affect social good. I'm also glad to be a part of a global conversation, as we could also see here behind us, or behind me in front of you, that aims to explore and forge partnerships that will benefit the largest number of people in the best way possible. In 2010, the United Nations Foundation and the United Nations Development Program teamed up with Mashable and 92nd Street Y and started bringing together people through the Social Goods Summit, from world leaders to grassroots activists to discuss possible solutions to the world's toughest problems. For the past four years, Rappler has been organizing the Philippine leg of the Social Goods Summit and has put the Philippines on the map of this global conversation. United Nations in the Philippines, through the United Nations Development Program, is very happy to partner with Rappler in this initiative. The 2015 Social Good Summit Philippines comes at an important juncture. Yesterday, at the United Nations General Assembly and the Sustainable Development Summit in New York, UN member states formally adopted and launched the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or the Global Goals, which are an agreed vision to put people and planet on a sus sustainable path by 2030. In the words of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, the Global Goals represent a universal, transformative, and integrated agenda that heralds a historic turning point for our world. 17 goals with 169 targets can in one sense be seen as an immense agenda, and it is of course. But these are the essential component parts to shift the world to a part of sustainable development, to deliver on economic development, social inclusion, and environmental sustainability. In very simple words, these global goal, goals aim to end extreme poverty, fight inequality and injustice, and take action against climate change. At the same time, Filipinos start thinking about choosing a new president in May next year and to elect national and local leaders. Leaders who will take the relay and build on past progress to lead the Philippines towards the achievement of these global goals by 2030. I think that you can agree with me that the confluence of these two events can have a significant impact on what the world, your world, will look like 15 years from now in the year 2030. The global goals 
build on the Millennium Development Goals that I'm sure that you've heard of. Eight goals for human development that the world committed to achieving by 2015, this year. The MDGs adopted in 2000 aimed at an array of issues including reducing poverty, hunger, disease, gender inequality, increasing access to water and sanitation. Enormous progress really has been made on these MDGs in the past 15 years, showing the value of a unifying agenda underpinned by goals and targets. Let's see what these have been. just for a moment and, and, and translate this into what has been achieved here in the Philippines when it comes to the Millennium Development Goals. First of all, poverty. Poverty incidence has decreased from 34.4% in 1991 to an estimate of 25.8% in 2014. However, reducing hunger and the prevalence of underweight children, unemployment, and quality employment remain challenges. More children are now going to school, up to 95.2% in 2012-13 from 83.2% in 2006 uh, to 7. The reforms undertaken by the Philippine government have significant, significantly contributed to progress that you have made on education over the past 15 years and further progress will be made possible with the kindergarten to 12 or K to 12 as we know it program. However, despite this improvement, there remains the big challenge to ensure that children that begin to school actually stay in and finish school here in the Philippines. More girls are enrolling and finishing basic secondary and tertiary education. Today, more women are functionally literate than men here in the Philippines. Their reading and writing skills go beyond the basics and they're able to use these more advanced skills to stay and perform better in school or gain more meaningful employment. Women have become more visible in terms of political participation with a steady increase in the number of women elected in the legislative seats and local government positions. In fact, the Philippines is first amongst Asian countries in the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report. The Philippines ranked fifth out of 136 countries, the only Asian country in the top 10 since 2006. And I think we can give a big <laughs> applaud to the Philippines for that achievement. Also, a significant decrease has been achieved in the number of deaths of infants and children under five. But there are still many women who continue to have limited access to reproductive health services and who die from giving birth. Deaths from and incidences of malaria have significantly decreased over the past 15 years, with 27 provinces declared malaria free. The prevalence of tuberculosis, that was also a target, is still high. However, deaths resulting from it have declined. Alarmingly though, there's a rapid increase in the number of new HIV infections that needs to be addressed urgently. 
Access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities have significantly increased. While air quality remains a challenge, there's been a remarkable decrease in the consumption of ozone-depleting substances here in the Philippines, attributed to a number of regulations and policies on improving air quality in the country, including the passage of the Clean Air Act of 1999. However, forest cover, also a target, continues to decline here in the Philippines, and the numbers of swell, slum dwellers continue to rise. The Philippines, over the past 15 years, has made significant gains in mobilizing domestic public resources, private businesses and finance, and international cooperation in development partnerships. Looking at connect the cost of selected and essential medicines have been cut by almost 50%. And looked in, looking at your connectivity, as has been referred to here earlier also, the number of people that have telephone and cellular phones access and ownership has significantly increased. Even if individual internet access is still below the international average of 39%, the Philippines is consistently hailed as the texting capital of the world. You are a country of great social networkers. This, of course, makes the Social Good Summit here today even more relevant and significant as it allows all of us to discuss and explore collaborations on the tremendous potential of the Philippines to harness technology for social good. So much has been achieved, but more remains to be done. Let's continue to watch the video clip. In the lead up to the launch of the Global Goals, uh, the United Nations and partners ran the My World, a global survey which captured people's voices, priorities and views for global leaders, for global leaders to listen to them when they began the process of defining the new development agenda for the world. Almost eight and a half million people across the globe have voted for the issues which are the most important to them and their families, from better health care to clean water and sanitation to freedom from discrimination. In the Philippines alone, more than 100,000 people participated in the survey. And let's see what issues mattered most to them. You will see that the uh, top five issues that the Filipinos care most, most about are good education, better health care, better job opportunities, an honest and responsive government, and affordable and nutritious food. These five and 12 others are all part of the new sustainable development agenda, the global goals. So what is then sustainable Development. Well, sustainable development is development that improves the living conditions in the present without compromising the resources of future generations. Sustainable development means understanding that we are all connected in space and time. Economic and social well-being cannot be improved with measures that destroy the environment. Intergenerational harmony is crucial. 
all development has to take account of its impact on the opportunities for future generations. So it's not just about us who are here today, but it's about those who are going to follow us. This means that we need to work together to make positive transformations for a more just and equitable society. We must all do our part to achieve this. Our leaders will have to be the champions of and commit to this change. So what is then the difference between the Millennium Development Goals and the Global Goals? Well, first of all, to me, if I look at them, the Global Goals take a higher aim. As an example, rather than looking at further reducing poverty over the coming 15 years, the Global Goals aim to end extreme poverty altogether. The Global Goals expand the scope of our actions to what I would call a whole of humanity, whole of planet approach. There's no more a north and a south. We're all concerned. The Global Goals recognize that our world is interconnected and that achieving and safeguarding prosperity and sustainability requ requires all of us, the north and the south, to join forces, contribute, and be responsible in the use of resources and the distribution of wealth. The global goals are a set of integrated and indivisible goals that bring together three crucial dimensions, the economic, the social, and the environmental that take their starting point in five Ps. So this is what member states of the United Nations have committed to only yesterday in New York. People, we are determined to end poverty and hunger in all their forms and dimensions and to ensure that all human beings can fulfill their potential in dignity and equality and in a an healthy environment. Planet. We are determined to protect the planet from degradation, including through sustainable consumption and production, sustainably managing its natural resources and taking urgent action on climate change so that it can support the needs of the present and future generations. Prosperity. We are determined to ensure that all human beings can enjoy prosperous and fulfilling lives and that economic, social, and technological progress occurs in harmony with nature. Peace. We are determined to foster peaceful, just, and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. There can be no sustainable development without peace. And there can be no peace without sustainable development. And lastly, partnerships. We are determined to mobilize the means required to implement this agenda through a global partnership for sustainable development based on a spirit of strengthened global solidarity focused in particular on the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable. And this is the 193 member states of the United Nations putting their names to this manifest only yesterday. Now, watch this. Hello. Que do? Hola. Guten Tag. Ni homa. Bonjour. Salam. Shalom. Hi. The world's countries have united to create a blueprint for the future. In September, the UN is unveiling their global goals. A, a manifesto, manifesto of today's, today's humans. humans. By today's humans. For today's humans. And, and for tomorrow's, tomorrow's humans too. So, to ignite world leaders and turn these words into actions, we're making a film. But we need you. Whether you know it or not, the world needs your voice. Let's change things. Create a world where hope is something you can reach out and touch. Hope. Esperanza. Esperanza. Tikva. Natu Anya. Here are 17 other ways to say hope. The global goals of the United Nations. We will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. We will live in a world where no one goes hungry. And no one wakes up in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has to die from diseases we know how to cure. Where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. 
we will live in a world where everyone goes to school and education gives us the knowledge and skills for fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all women and all girls have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We can't succeed if half the world is being held back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone. Heat, Heat light, and, and power, power for, for the, the planet. planet. Without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. And new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. We will live in a world where our industries, our infrastructure, and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to make all our lives better. We will live in a world where prejudice and extremes of inequality are defeated inside our country and between different countries. We will live in a world where people live in cities and communities that are safe, progressive, and support all those that live in them. We will live in a world where we replace what we consume, a planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We will live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate change. We will live in a world where we restore and protect the life in our oceans and seas. We will live in a world where we restore and protect life on land, the forests, the animals, the earth itself. We will live in a world with peace between and inside countries, where all governments are open and answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And justice rules with everyone equal before the law. And we must live in a world where all countries and we, their people, work together in partnerships of all kinds to, to make, make these global goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. Film yourself delivering the goal that resonates with you. We'll put it all together with thousands of your faces, voices, and all of our collective hope to create a film and show it to the world on TV, online, and live. Your voice matters. Your voice matters. Make it known. Say it loud. And let it echo around the globe. The future is in your hands. The future is in your hands. The future is in your hands. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. So um, what can we do then? Well, first of all, we have to care about these goals. And when people care about something, they share it, face to face or on social media. Because people have something to say about the issues that they represent. And if we look at the stories that have gone viral over the recent past, we realize that, in fact, we do care already about the global goals. So look at Daniel Cabrera, nine years old, who became a global sensation as he showed his determination to get an education in this photo uh, behind me that went viral. The photo captured the attention of people all around the world and sparked the Akosi Daniel Initiative, a fundraising campaign aiming to support education programs here in the Philippines. Daniel now has a scholarship. And Daniel's story connects to Global Goal, goal 4 on quality education. Look at this photo of a starving polar bear that has become an icon of the threat uh, of climate change. Now, the photographer, Kerstin Langenberger, agrees that she can't directly say that the polar bear has become so thin because of climate change. However, the photo basically represents the impact of global warming, drastically changing the natural habitat and natural food sources for the animal to survive. Typhoon Haiyan is very close to all of us because Filipinos experienced the unspeakable impact of climate change. And these stories that also went viral across the world connect to Global Goal 13 on climate action. Look at the photo on the left. Uh, some of us experienced that, I think, sitting. We, we may be in the picture even. Uh, showing the traffic gridlock called the Carmageddon on 8 September because of a heavy downpour in Metro Manila. The worsening traffic situation and flooding clearly demonstrate the need for better and sustainable 
infrastructure, which is linked to Global Goal 9 on industry, innovation, and infrastructure. It's also linked to Global Goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities. In fact, I think you will all agree that we are here because we care. We care about technology, and we care about innovation, and we care about development. We care about what kind of world we and our children will be living in by 2030. The global goals are everybody's goals. They are for me and my children, as much as they are for you and for those of you who don't have children yet, for your future children. For the global goals to be successful, we need to make sure now that they become known, are cared about, and acted upon. We all have a responsibility to make this happen. The global goals are far more than inspirations or words of good intent. They provide a roadmap for action in the key areas where countries will have to invest in order to move forward. Uh, Sorry about that. These global goals, it's easier with a teleprompter if you know how to use one. The global, these global goals need to be backed up by national policies and will play a major role in shaping where and how resources are used. Implementation will be led by countries and its success will rely on countries' own systems and programs and its ability to harness local and global partnerships. The SDGs will be a compass for aligning countries' development objectives with their global commitment. The United Nations stands ready to assist the Philippine government in reflecting the global goals in its development plans and policies. We can also help accelerate the process and implementation of the goals through a global practice on policy and governance for sustainable development. These will require leadership, commitment, and determination. You have a golden opportunity ahead of you by linking the global goals to the electoral debate in the upcoming elections, as well as to the new administration's development plan to make sure that the relay and the positive developments from the MDGs are carried forward and expanded in the global goals. You have the vision. It is to build people-centered, inclusive, peaceful, and prosperous societies where human rights are upheld. You have the ingredients. The global goals, the 17 global goals, are transformative and bring together the strengths of government, the private sector, civil society, the youth, and really all of us. You have the experience building on the lessons learned from working towards achieving the MDGs, the most successful global anti-poverty push in history. Looking now at the hugely ambitious agenda of the 17 global goals and their 169 targets, it is easy to be a skeptic. But I, and I hope many with me, choose to be inspired. Because, after all, what's the point of stopping halfway? Watch this. Oh, and they're away, and Gavin got away brilliantly. He's ahead of the field, and Usain Bolt has stopped! Usain Bolt has stopped at the 50-meter line! Oh, that is a pity! Fire. Apollo, you're on course. 226 hours to the moon orbit. Okay, thanks, Houston. But I think we'll be heading back now. Come again? Yeah, it was kind of fun. But I think halfway will do. Job done.
Let's tell everyone that it's time to change the world. Tell everyone about the global goals. For those of us who plan and hope to live 15 more years, we are the first generation that can end poverty. But we may also be the last generation that can save the planet for future generations. Use your phones, use your tablets, use your laptops, use your computers to do social good. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ulla, for reminding us about the 17 global goals.